for this evening. So most of you might happen to recognize Kim Hankins, who is the current president for Defenders of McHenry County. She also is the director of sustainability at McHenry County College, a place you might've heard of. She's been there a number of years now and has a wealth of background in this particular topic. But most importantly, in the last few years, she's been working on something really big, really hard, and she did it. So give her a round of applause. And she is now Dr. Kim Hankins. So please welcome Dr. Hankins. And I forgot to say, if you could hold your questions to the end, because I know we all have burning questions about recycling, hold on to them though, let her talk, and then she'll dig into the questions, all right? Kim. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna put this on there. Yeah. Good. Let me know if that's not transmitting. Hi, everybody. Hi. Thanks for having me tonight. This is so fun. Are you most of you know I was going to be joined with Kelly Beckman from the McKenna County um, Department of Health, but unfortunately she's not feeling well. So I'm going to wing her part. So be nice to me. Um, but no, we had Kelly and I talked to a lot over the last couple of days, and it's really nice to be able to talk about recycling. Ironically, the title of my dissertation is Sustainability in Community Colleges. It's not just recycling. Yet here I am. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, and I appreciate the the well wishes for the doctor. And it was really a fun process, and I met a lot of great people. And Okay, not all of it was fun, but most of it was. Okay, so we're going to jump in here. So this um, this was Kelly's title, like tub, that. jug, jar, can, bottle. Really, I'm done. That's all you got to remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you got to remember. But we're going to get into some more. So we're going to jump right into plastic film. So I get, um, as you can imagine, a lot of questions, as I know Destiny and Aaron do, and I know had uh, lots of people get lots of questions all the time about um, recycling. This is one of the top questions I get a lot is our shipping materials and our plastic film. So I'm gonna jump into this right away. So this tiny little print over here, I'm sorry, is um, all the things you can put in the collection boxes that are outside our big box stores. So the jewel, whatever, bubble wrap, people are wondering what is case over wrap? That's obviously the stuff that wraps around our big cases of soda or water, hopefully not water, but whatever. Um, salt and ice bags and plastic shipping envelopes, which we'll talk a little bit more about in just one second. This is sort of the no-no list up here. You can't put biodegradable or compostable bags in the plastic film recycling. Okay, that's something I think is a lot of confusing for people. The metallized chip bags, most of our chip bags are like that now. They're kind of metal on the inside. Um, paper line bags, and then some of these mailers and bags. Again, we're gonna talk about that in just a second. And then flexible plastics with rigid attachments. So if you're talking about the salt, an ice bag has a handle, cut that off, okay? And then you can recycle the rest of it. So um, there's a lot of conversation these days. Can you guys see that okay? This says Jewel under here. Um, these are the stores in McHenry County that currently work with Trex. Um, some of you guys might be familiar with Trex. They collect plastic film and turn it into all sorts of great stuff, mainly plastic lumber. Um, they have received multiple, multiple awards. They are not greenwashers. I've looked extensively. A lot of us have looked extensively at their website. They actually do what they're saying they're going to do. So what happens with these companies um, is their distribution, the trucks come bring the food to their stores. Then the empty trucks take the plastic bags back to the distribution centers and trucks picks them up from there. Now these, you can't see on the bottom, but down here you can see Menards, Target, Walmart, Heinen's, Dick Sporting Goods, or some others. They also collect, but they work with a variety of people. I'm not saying Trex is better or worse. I just know more about the process from Trex. I don't know what these other guys are doing. Um, okay, so let's talk a minute about shipping materials. Let me just, I know I'm going off the camera for a second, but I need my props. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, hang on. <laughs> Okay. So the the rule of thumb, wait a minute. There we go. The rule of thumb about the shipping bags. I got a little sample of I collected these from a variety of people. Is if you can put your finger through it. I'm gonna pop this, so don't worry. Okay. You can put your finger through it like that. Everybody see me do that? If you can put your finger through it, then it's plastic film. You can put it in the collection boxes, not in your curbside but in the collection boxes. And you should pop it before you... And you absolutely, thank you, sir. You absolutely should do it. Absolutely pop them. It even says it on those. Please deflate before recycling. 
Um, this one, I wonder who this is from. <laughs> this is um, Amazon bag, obviously. And you, I can't really stick my thing there, sort of, but I can't. So this would not be recyclable. I would not put this in your plastic film. The other issue is it's shiny on the inside. So it's a little bit metallicized. So I know this is really difficult to chew, to figure out. This one um, is a combination of two things. So it's our bubble wrap, right? On the inside, which we know is on our list. And it's also like a plastic bag material. It actually has this label on it. This is our how to recycle, how to number two recycle.info website. It's a really good resource. Has it on here. This is recyclable in your um, collection bins at the big box stores. Okay, everybody, you're shaking your head. You don't think so? No, not at home. Definitely not at home. Now, this is all that we're, we're talking about is the. Is this like film then? It is. Did yeah, it's like the, the it goes to the plastic film. So one thing I just um, was talking to somebody else about with the shipping containers is you, I don't know if you know this, but Amazon has a low impact shipping option. It's not easy to find. Yeah. You have to search for it. But if you do, you will, instead of getting those bags, you'll get these, which are paper and are easy to recycle and your curbside even. So this is a paper bag. So anyway, is an option when we're in our Amazon account? it is an option. Actually, you will have to select it for every purchase you make. For what? every single purchase, so they make it difficult. For they us. make it, they, they're not intentionally making it difficult because not everything can be put in, uh -huh. obviously, one of these paper bags. So, um, anyway, so things to look for is also this symbol. This is the next Trex. So, this is this is ne Trex's version of this. So, if you see the next Trex symbol, it's also plastic film, and you can also recycle that. Sorry, I keep thinking you have a question. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I think that um, just a little bit more on shipping materials and then we'll just so we can take a picture of that. I can definitely share all this, but sure. Let me get my okay. What do we know about standing in high space? Okay. Okay. And I'll absolutely share this, um, put this on a defender's website or wherever. So a lot of a lot of the stuff you guys know already, cardboard boxes, obviously, as as Sue said, don't recycle air, please flatten everything. Take as much tape as possible off it. Does not have to be absolutely perfect, not one drop of tape. Take as much as you can, but and then you can recycle it. But please remember to take off your identifying information. This is something how people steal identities and it's super, super common, unfortunately. That can go in your curbside is your cardboard boxes and these guys, those cardboard envelopes, those paper envelopes. Start from, you guys know the drill. You're all Defenders members, right? Yes. <laughs> Y'all know we have all these great spaces to take the styrofoam. No black styrofoam. I meant to bring a little um, sample of some styrofoam. Here is black styrofoam. Um, Dell, the college just ordered about 300 computers from Dell and they all came wrapped in this black foamy styrofoamy stuff. It's it's smushy and that is not recyclable at all. So just remember how, think about how many phone calls and what emails I've sent. If it doesn't snap, it's a good way to put it. If it doesn't snap, thank you. Okay. Yeah, okay. trays for me are okay. They're clean. Uh, yeah, if they're clean, right? Okay. I generally I've heard the rule is no black styrofoam, but I guess the meat trays are okay. Okay. So Kelly is not. I'm sorry. More questions. More on. More on that. I promise. I'll... Um. Someone on Zoom wants to know: Do you have to take the lights off the mailers, or is it just to protect your identity? It's to protect your identity. You do not have to. Did you have to take the labels off the boxes and the? You don't have to to recycle them. It's just a good idea, a safety idea. Um. So this is Kelly's slide. I kind of mushed it all into one slide. So bear with me while I share some information that she want to make sure that you guys knew. Um. So the depart the medical waste. Hang on. There we go. So mo as you guys probably know, most police departments and there's some Walgreens and a few CVSs take medication for disposal. Um, the majority of those medication take back programs were, comma, were funded by Illinois EPA. But starting in December, this December 2023, the programs are going to be funded by the pharmaceutical manufacturers. So finally, somebody taking responsibility. I don't get too excited because other things are not that way. But anyway, the, the, the whole thing goes into effect December uh, 1st, and every Illinois county will be entitled to at least one medication collection location per 50,000 residents. 
obviously we're going to have a lot more. The police just have to re-sign up with this program and they can do it. All the stuff gets collected by, yeah. A lot of police stations have adult recycling mailboxes inside the police station, like Harry Act County. Uh -huh. No liquids, only pills. And you have to have it in the original bottle. Does anyone even know what it is? No, am I wrong? Yeah, I no, haven't. It cuts down on space. Yep. They want it in a Ziploc bag. Yeah. You can dump all the pills out in a Ziploc bag and put them in there. Um, so once the stuff is collected, people often ask me this, what happens to it then? Um, there's a, The company is called Heritage, and it goes to either Ohio or Indiana where it gets incinerated. So the McKenna County Sheriff's Office supposedly has an incinerator, um, but we don't really know. They're not really, it's not really open to the public. We think it's more like for, you know, illegal stuff. But as the gentleman said, pills, liquids, inhalers, um, there's always going to be exceptions. Of course, the big exception is sharps. No needles can go in these um, sharps. Like this is from Kelly, so don't shoot the messenger. Can go in your residential garbage if you put them in a puncture resistant sealed container. So I have a friend that saves her uh, laundry jugs and puts her husband's diabetes charts in there. And then um, don't put it in your recycle bin, obviously. Sorry, I didn't see you. You're in the shadow. What you, what's up? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Thank you. There are a couple locations. There are a few police um, stations that will take sharps. They don't, the one that's in McHenry County asked me actually not to tell anybody. It's just kind of bizarre. Anyway, so that's medical waste. So I want to talk a little bit about hazardous, household hazardous waste. As you know, for the last two years, three years actually, we've um, been able to host one here in the county after not being able to have one for over seven years. Um, it's just a change in the structure in Illinois EPA. So that's been really great. Um, of course, you know that we there are five household hazardous waste permanent sites four of which are in Northern Illinois. Of course, the other one's way down in the Southern part of the state. Um, I asked Kelly about whether or not we would have one next year. Generally, they're in June. And uh, she said, she's really fingers crossed. She's got all, all signs point to yes, that that will happen. So it doesn't have a date for me yet, but it usually comes out in December, January. So um, either it'll definitely be in the green guide, but you can watch this on um, Office of Health, Department of Health website. So paint, we have some cool news. So. Um, there's only right now, um, well, the, a lot of the household hazardous waste collection sites will accept oil-based paint, but switching to latex paint, um, only a few retailers and townships accept them in McHenry County. Lots of our Ace Hardware stores will take them, but they do charge us, right? Um, technically, latex paint is not a hazardous material and can go in your garbage um, after it's dried out or solidified. So I just actually had a call today. A lady was moved into a house. I can't tell you how many calls I get like this. I'm sure you do too. I just moved into this house and there's 25 cans of paint in the basement. What do I do? So we go through the whole, like consolidate them all. And so you only have to pay for one gallon. Um, but anyway, it's still, um, hopefully, hopefully we can find a reuse for it. But on July 28th of this year, our governor signed into law the Paint Stewardship Act. So that requires manufacturers of architectural paint sold in retail to uh, plan for a post-consumer paint stewardship program, but they're not paying for it. <laughs> the uh, program is going to start in January 1st, and it's going to be funded through what they call an assessment. But basically, every gallon of paint we purchase, a few cents of that purchase will go towards this program. And so we will have um, a permanent place to recycle our paint, which is great. So it's going to be a few cents, less than a dollar. A few cents, certainly less, a lot cheaper than doing it um, $5 a can if we had to do it here. Um, oh, I put this up here because the McHenry County Solid Waste Plan and all these acronyms up here. So that's obviously Kelly's Office of the Department of Health, the Solid Waste Advisory Committee. A lot of us are on that committee. We worked with Kelly on the plan and the water, not water, waste reduction action team of the defenders also worked on the solid waste plan. There's a lot of really, really good information in there. And I highly recommend you check it out if you're um, into this stuff like we are. And they, Kelly worked really hard on it. Um, okay, so we're gonna do a quick curbside review. Um, I know a lot of you guys know all this stuff already, but feel free to stop me if you wanna get into it a little bit more. We're gonna do paper and glass first, because those are one of the easier, couple of easy topics. I don't think I need to put exactly what paper, because we, I think we're all pretty familiar with what kind of paper, but some things to keep in mind. Again, flatten it, keep it dry. If it's soggy or wet, either leave it out somewhere and let it dry or don't put it in your recycle bin. Um, no grease, right? We've talked about pizza boxes before. The top of the pizza box is fine. The greasy part, not so fine. Throw that part out. No food stains. Again, we talked about the tape. I get this question all the time about staples versus binder clips. Staples are fine. 
Bonnie flips are not so fine. So uh, staples are okay. Glass recycling. Oh, I wish I got more questions about glass. It's so easy. Glass bottles, glass jars. That's it. Glass bottles, glass jars. All colors, and you don't need to take, oh, don't need to take the labels off. <laughs> what about the lids? Yeah. <laughs> Leave the lids on. Okay, mm -hmm. leave the lids on. Leave the lids, leave the lids on. on, right? All of my recycling friends, leave the lids on everything. Yeah, I'm cleaning that. Yeah, but there's still a little bit of stuff on there, or like. Well, you know, honestly, that's a matter of opinion, and I, I personally do don't, don't think it needs to be personal, completely clean. There's a lot of people that like to put those peanut butter jars and stuff in the dishwasher. I really, I'm open to any other opinions, but my opinion is it does not have to be absolutely clean, Barb. I learned a valuable lesson in the last couple of years because when I was younger, I never had one of those gray things on my phone. Gray, whatever it is, it will get out at least 80, 90% of it. I know. That's yeah. Uh, 80, 90% is perfect. I have one yeah. question. For paper, is there a limit on the size of paper? Like, can you know, like a post it, like a small piece of paper with that? That It'll probably get lost. So I tend to bundle that stuff all up together. If you can wad it up or if you're wadding up a piece of paper already, you can stick the post-it in there. But the little stuff definitely. I think the argument has often been anything less than a half size, like this, like a half a sheet is too small to go on its own. Oh, but you know. Okay. Uh, it's warm up so there. that would answer probably my question, like the strips that you pull up of envelopes and things like that. Strips you pull up envelopes are not usually paper. They're usually a slimy plastic that's okay. not usually. And then what about like, you know, when you do a sheet of labels, that back part of the label, can that that's be not... recycled or no? Nope. No. Nope. 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 So, <laughs> so uh, for the envelopes and the film, I was told that you're supposed to actually take the films. You can leave the windows on. You can leave the windows on. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that, the film films are going to be flexible. Kleenex boxes, anybody? I take I take it off. I take the plastic off the Kleenex box because it's paper. But if you guys are welcome to jump in, yeah. So I I almost sliced my finger up. There's like a wine bottle and a plastic. There's a combination of plastic cork. Yeah, that's trying to cut it off with the knife and work. The, so, um, <laughs> the last thing I heard about plastic corks is that they are not recyclable because they are too small. But anybody else has heard anything different? Do you have the wine bottle, the combination plastic cork? No. No, because it's not, it's separate. I mean, it's gonna not going to go back in there into the wine thing. Let me keep going, and I promise I'll circle back to some of these questions. Okay, let me just keep going to a couple more slides. I don't have that many more, and we can get to the questions, I promise. Um, so metal, again, pretty easy. One of the things I always tell people is the empty aerosol containers. A lot of people don't know you can just take your aerosol containers. What I do is just hold it down in my sink and let whatever's in there just empty out until there's really nothing else, and then it goes in the recycling, just the way it is. Just um, aluminum foil, again, that's one of those things that you can crinkle up. If it's a small piece, then hold on to it. A lot of people ask me about yogurt tops that are foil. I just collect them and then make one big ball. Don't just stick one in there at a time because they're too small. Again, think of like this size, something smaller than a half a sheet of paper, find some more and make, make it friends. Um, these things obviously don't recycle pots and pans. I don't, I get this question occasionally too from again, new homeowners, people moving in, um, wire hangers, utensils, don't recycle those either. Um, the reason why these have asterisks is that there's just other resources. These don't go in your curbside. So there's some non-curbside, obviously small appliances go with our electronic waste. Automotive parts can be our metal um, recycling. So there's other options. And a lot of those are detailed in the green guide too. Um, okay, so plastic, let's talk about plastic. So my plastic yes list, um, pretty self-explanatory. Um, I learned something today. Someone told me that I had health and beauty products up here. And uh, Aaron told me that the tubes that we use for our lotions or our toothpaste um, not, are not recyclable. That they have, there's something in them, right? That makes the- Yeah, it's like a, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a composite plastic in order to get that flexibility. So it's kind of a mishmash, if you will, of different plastics. So it's not an identified um, 
you know, polymer that would end up, you know, getting purchased by a company. So if you have the option to buy, you know, a bottle over a tube, you know, I would make that choice. I learned something today. So cool. Thank you. Um, so takeout food containers. So this is obviously over the last few years, we have accumulated a lot of takeout food containers and there's lots in my house too. Uh, the black plastic and the dark plastic, the greens and the really dark ones. Um, I also learned today there's not really a market for them on the other end. They can be recycled, but there's nothing going to happen. There's no market for them on the other end. That black plastic is like the bottom of the barrel. It's like everything, all the crap that's left over gets turned into black plastic things, which is why takeout containers are so cheap, right? You get the black bottoms and the plastic top. The clear plastic tops of the little container, you know, of the Chinese food or whatever it might be, those are recyclable. I, I just wouldn't recycle the black stuff because there's, as Aaron told me, there's no market for it. There's no place for it to go. So again, you guys probably know all this, but um, no no's for the plastic plastic utensils. Um, I know people are going to argue with me, but uh, there's no there is no plastic recycle no plastic utensil that you can do anything else with right now. They are all single use plastics, <laughs> all of them. Cups, plates, meat trays. Obviously, those are styrofoam toys. A lot of people ask me about this too, like oh my son has a skateboard or whatever. It's all plastic. It's not recyclable in your curbside. There may be options to recycle it somewhere else, but it's not in your curbside. Plus there's maybe a, um, a place you could thrift that or reuse it. Plant and nursery trays, all, almost every garden center will take them back now. So just take them back. If you really want to save money, Colsey's out on 47 and 176, they'll give you money for them. So um, not a lot of money, don't get excited. <laughs> Um, I don't know why people insist on putting hoses and like snaky things in recycling, but it happens all the time. And it basically just screws up the entire conveyor belt and it's a giant mess. So don't do that. <laughs> and plastic. <laughs> and we think, okay, we talked a little about this, but this is such an, it's been such an issue for the last couple of years. I just want to put it on here. Labels on or off plastic and glass containers. They can be definitely left on. Um, most of the labels on plastic items are printed on the plastic. Again, your containers do not need to be absolutely perfectly spit clean. My mother-in-law, God bless her, washes that peanut butter jar till that I could, you know, it's perfect. Anyway, um, cardboard boxes, again, as I said, this thing's before, you can um, take as much as you can off there. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you can leave the lids on. Soda, sorry, pop bottles, um, prescription bottles, all that, leave the lids on because they're um, so I was doing a presentation for some ladies up in Johnsburg, and they asked me to explain where it all goes. So I changed this a little bit. And you, again, you guys might know this, but I learned today about some stuff that our new hauler, um, Lakeshore Recycling or LRS, is taking. But this first one, this is from Crystal Lake. So your garbage is traveling between 40 and 100 miles before it reaches a landfill. These are landfills that are in DeKalb, Winnebago, and Rockford, Orchard Hills, Davis Junction and some out by the Iowa border. There's obviously more than that, but those are the main ones that our garbage here in Crystal Lake goes to. Our recycling uh, now goes to <clears throat> the um, Lakeshore Recite LRS section of a transfer station in Lake County in Rolling Meadows. It does not go to the transfer station here in Crystal Lake anymore. Um, and then it goes to LRS's new material recycling facility on the south side of Chicago. So that's about a 55 mile trip. Just some things to think about when, you know, I'm just going to recycle this, it's fine. Just, you know, think about where it's going, how long it takes, um, and the footprint of some of the stuff that we choose. So it wouldn't be fun if I didn't do a commercial for my own document. Um, this is the green guide. This is uh, McHenry County Recycling Directory. Uh, started many years ago by um, a good friend and recycler over there in the corner. Uh, but this comes out every April. We start updating this right after Christmas. And uh, we just go through every category and see what we can find. It's changed a lot. Um, even since April, there's been a fair amount of changes in this one. We try to update it online as much as we can, but sometimes we just can't keep up with it. There is another electronics collection, a countywide electronics document shredding styrofoam defenders are part of it, along with the county. It's October 14th, so coming up really quickly. Um, and it's at the county administration building in Woodstock. Sorry. 
It's at the County Administration Building in Woodstock from nine to noon. And again, they'll take um, electronics. You've got screens, there is a fee, document shredding, styrofoam textiles, fluorescent <clears throat> and LED bulbs and batteries. Um, this, uh, a lot of this information that we talked about with the uh, packing material is in here. It was an article that I wrote with some other people about the packing material. So that's in here too. So you're welcome to that. There's, I brought a few copies with me. Uh, you know, you're welcome to them. They're also, of course, available online at the Sustainability Center website. We do it on time. Time is it? 630. Perfect. Okay, good. So I'm just going to wrap up. I mean, I don't, I know I don't need to tell you guys this. Sorry, your choices matter. Um, looking for and buying recycled content. It's just so important, especially now. We need to keep that loop. We need to keep aware of the boxes. If you're a Triscuit fan versus a Wheat Thin fan, look and see which one, <clears throat> which box is made from recycled content. Buy that one. <clears throat> Consider, sorry, I'm starting to lose my voice. Consider swapping out some things. Be aware of greenwashing. Anybody familiar with greenwashing? Most of us are. So greenwashing is when a company makes claims about their sustainability with nothing to back it up. I'll give you an example. I just mentioned that um, black styrofoam stuff that um, came wrapped all around our Dell computers that we bought at the college. I contacted Dell. Well, first I went to their website. There's only like four or five pages all about how they're packing and they're shipping and blah, blah, blah. is also green and blah, blah. And so, of course, I sent them an email, maybe three or four. And then I also called this guy, our local salesman, who called me right back and said, oh, no, 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 no. It's all recyclable. It's not. <laughs> it's, it's black styrofoam that's squishy. You can't snap it. You can't do anything with it. So currently some uh, student clubs at MCC are making Halloween decorations. So that's the best we can do. But greenwashing is everywhere. It's on everything. Everybody wants to tell you how green they are and how fabulous they are and all these great things. Please do your homework. If you're ever not ever not sure and you just want you don't want to look it up, call me. I'll I'll tell you. I'll look it up for you because it takes doesn't take me very long anymore. So um, there's things that uh, companies have to adhere to now <clears throat> that will immediately tell you that they're doing what they're saying they're going to do. Um, and then you know I don't, again I don't need to tell this crowd to get single use plastics out of your life. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is really fun to talk about this stuff. It really is a passion for me. Um, it's been so much fun to do this over the years, and I love the way, I mean, I don't love the way it changes all the time, but it's always interesting, and it's never dull, and I appreciate all the questions, and I'm so excited that a couple other hardcore recyclers are here, too, <laughs> and so if I can answer any questions, I will do my best. I do have one little giveaway, something else that's happening next um, Saturday. I don't know if you guys know this, is we're having a partial eclipse, so it's not a full eclipse. Um, we'll just be able to see, sorry, I keep walking up there. We'll just be able to see um, about two thirds of the sun will be covered up way up here, right? And so I have glasses for you guys if you want some. I don't have, I only have this amount with me. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, I knew that was a question because there's another eclipse in April. So hang on to them and that's a really, really good one. So hang on to them and then don't call me after that one. <laughs> but, I'll just hang on to him while I get into it. I got you started. Okay, I don't know where to start. Okay, Sue, you had your hand up first. <laughs> Thanks. When you recycle and put things in your curbside bin, how much of it actually gets recycled, particularly glass? I was under the understanding that they couldn't even recycle the glass. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's okay. What do you think? Tell I mean, me what you think. Really <clears throat> so I've had the luxury of going to most of the Mercs in the Chicago market, and they could be at group tomorrow. But, oh, cool. Um, sorry. <laughs> I'm my little escapades. <laughs> um, most of the Mercs will tell you about 25% of what they receive is actually recovered. And, uh -huh. and it's a big reason it costs them less money just to put it in the landfill. Well, it's twofold. It's, it's some agent. of the material is too small. To be recovered. That's not really the big concern. Too small because they use mechanical sorting system, and things smaller than your fist usually are going to fall through and not get recovered. That's why we want caps on. That's right. why they want caps on. Um, the other piece of the puzzle is just basically people putting the wrong things in, right? Not even dirty, just the wrong things. Uh, like hoses mm -hmm. and tanglers and uh, you know holiday lights. No, I'm I'm actually more curious about the things that are actually recyclable. 
how much of it gets recycled. Well, you understand that the, the, the sorting facility your material goes to sells all of that material. So 75% of what they receive, they market. Now that goes to secondary and primary processors, so paper mills, plastic That's reclaimer, so awesome. um, things along metal, metal and glass recycling industries. They all have different yields. So it's it's difficult to at best to tell you that there's an answer to that. Yeah. And if you want to know who Pete is, he okay. works for the Solid Waste Agency of Lake County. So we're really happy that he's here tonight. <laughs> really happy. And then also I have a, also another secret weapon is our executive director for the Defenders and a former life work for Scarce, which is recycling education in DuPage County. So I have backup. <laughs> okay, so do we answer your question? Sort of. I will say that the solid waste plan of McHenry County does say that our numbers in McHenry County are closer, the 30, 30, 32%. So they're a little higher, but it varies for sure. And it's one of the things with that, I'm sorry, I promise I'll get to you guys. One of the things with that I've noticed is like I get a form I have to fill out every year and I probably get it three times before I do it. And I do this for a living. So you can imagine that a lot of people don't fill that form out. And um, I know that that's what is giving the data to them and it's not always accurate. So. And my point being, it's wish cycling a lot of times. We just need to stop using all of this single use stuff. Right. Yes. Stop <laughs> using the single use stuff. Right. And stop just throwing it in there. As Kelly said, when in doubt, throw it out, unfortunately. Go ahead. Yep. You, Me? Yep. Yep. And then oh. I'll work my way back. I promise. Okay. So I have two questions, actually. One well, you is only get one. Spray bottle. <laughs> you know, the, the spray bottle thingy. Mm -hmm. Do we leave that on as well? The, or not? The little tube in the no, the tube is too small. So I take the tube out, but the top of the spray bottle, as long as it's on the bottle. The sprayer is the sprayer. Okay. It's all. And then, do we, I think we will go back to when I was a kid, we returned our bottles and they actually reused them. And I know that my dairy delivery, I put my milk bottles out every week and they take them and they reuse them. Is there any hope that we could go back to reusing? Because it's just, to me, it seems like a better. I'll give you my honest opinion, and I'd love to hear from these two, and I get to you. No, no unfortunately. Because it's, it's cheaper not to. It's cheaper not to. I mean, yeah. you guys haven't disagreed with me at all? My answer is there's always a possibility, but yeah. you better get your local politicians to support mm, the That's true. That's yeah. a good yeah. point. It's not going to happen without a lot. Okay, I got a couple back here. Nancy, I'll start with you, Nancy, and I'll go that way. Nancy? I'm going to go back to paper. I've always been told that the receipts that you get that are printed at stores cannot recycle those. Cannot recycle those. That is true. That is true. They also, they have, um, sorry, Nancy, they have BPA in the in the receipts. So we want to keep no. that out of our paper stream. We don't want to commingle that. So they don't get them to stop. So when yeah. Receipts, Any opportunity that you yep. have to have them email you your receipt, yeah. take that out. Take that, yep. Yep. Go ahead. So, um, I, I used to. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Wait, I got a couple people in the back and I'll come back to you. I'm sorry. So I don't know your name, but in the green shirt. <laughs> so, so the, the earlier question was about the wine bottle thing that was plastic that you put yeah. together to put it on there. But the other thing is, I try to get all cotton or all wool, you know, to things that we call. But it seems like a lot of this would be, um, you know, you get a pair of pants that are two for seven. Elastic. Mm -hmm. So, what does that do for recycling? Is well, your that? clothes recycling is a whole different stream. So, your clothes recycling are, I mean, you're either going to thrift them or they're going to work their way through a collection box. Sometimes they're in the parking lots, and some, you know, some of those are great, some of them not so great. Um, there's lots of different arguments about that. Um, obviously, we suggest you thrift them. I actually spent some time with the folks from Goodwill today. They were on campus for Campus Sustainability Month, and I didn't realize that they take every piece of clothing. I thought we never put my dirty, gross socks in there, but she's like, yeah, put it in there because we shred it, and it becomes rags, industrial rags, and packing material, and insulation. So um, unfortunately, it's, so with recycling with those mixed things, it's not really going to make a difference because it's going to um, still be part of the either thrifting process or the shredding process. Does that answer your question? Well, I, I, I think so. There's the bottle question. The bottle the question. Bottle, like, why, when, um, so if you buy jeans, they have 2%. You know, Lycra or something. Effective 2% of it, as far as you said. You know, what, what, 
Well, it's more, honestly, it would probably be more on the manufacturing end. The impact of putting that lycra in a cotton product is probably going to be very energy intensive and very water intensive. I don't know. I do know that it takes 400 gallons of water to create a cotton t-shirt. So that's kind of depressing. Um, the bottle question, you guys, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I could help with the bottle. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. All right, so corks, no, right? Any kind of cork, synthetic or natural. It, the MRFs, your recycling facilities, don't have the capability of capturing those and doing it. Okay. So they're going to go with the residue and go out to a landfill. Or whatever. Uh, as far as anything that's attached to the glass, let's keep in mind, how do we recycle glass? Okay. We purposely break it at the sorting facility if it isn't broken or ready by the time it, they receive it there. Anything that's stuck to it may fall off at that point. If it's an aluminum wrap, it may get recovered. If it's a foil wrap or it's made metalized, it might get picked up, you know, but it may end up as residue anyway. Um, but the glass itself, which is 99% of the weight and everything, that's going to get broken. It's going to get mixed together with all colors. And then it's going to get shipped to a facility that's going to sort it using cameras to separate it by color basically brown, clear, and green. Um, and then they're going to sell that glass in different markets, whether it's fiberglass, glass to glass, or um, possibly like aggregate for sandblasting or yeah. building roads. Concrete and like stuff, that. yeah. So there's a couple different things. So bottom line, your glass is going to get broken. Key is don't put ceramics in, don't put bakeware in, don't put anything other than bottle glass that you buy from a retail environment. No window glass, no drinking yeah. glasses, no dry, no windshield glass, none of that stuff. They all melt at different temperatures and you contaminate a whole batch by just adding one. You have to wait. <laughs> okay. There's a, sure, there's a question back there and then right there. Sorry. Wait a minute, I have to come closer to you. I'm sorry. One more time? Yeah, so curbside recycling. Mm -hmm. Most people may know what is or is not But it's pretty apparent that so in our neighborhood, a lot of neighbors dump all sorts of things into their recycling bins. So yep. What's the best way? And is there an outreach, maybe from the collectors or from some other mechanisms too? And just educate the general. Oh boy, if I knew the answer to that question. <laughs> so his question was about outreach to the community and neighbors about wish cycling and just throwing everything in there. And honestly, if I knew the answer to that question, I don't know that I'd be here. But recycling has an app. That's true. Check on the app. Yes. But at the point of you know when the trucks are coming through, they're going to be just thinking well, there are communities, I don't think, here in McHenry County that, that charge you if you have contamination in there. It depends on, like, I do know if you try to wrap up a television in a blanket or something and put it in your garbage can, you're getting a ticket because they know immediately. And, um, you know, that if you are trying to put stuff, but I don't know, I wish I had a good answer. But that's interesting. I didn't... Well, and the wish cycling thing, for a long time, people did say, just put it in there in hopes that it will get recycled and just throw it all in there. And that, that was a long time we sort of had that message. But we have to go back to basics. We have to go back to the really simple paper, plastic, metal, glass that is just the simple way, the cleanest stream we can possibly have. Okay, I think blue, lady in blue shirt, you had a question, yeah. Um, so I, I started it at one point, the clean plastic that ties all vegetables and bread The, what are the items? I'm sorry. The, the, the tabs that, you know, for apples and salads. Yeah. Yeah. Close the bag. Oh, the close yeah. the bag. Oh, the, oh, no, those are way too small. Danielle cares yeah. for chairs. She'll still be taking those. Yeah. So, they're, so they're, I never found their address yet. I mean, they're, they're listed, you know, but there's no address. Yeah, I mean, I know she was in, she's in college, she's in university, so her 
the location was actually her parents' house. Oh, so yeah, I didn't hear about that. That was that might be the issue, but okay, like two more. But I thought Kay, the the scarce office, would take them and then send them out to her. Oh, Danielle, yeah. So you can get it it's scarce. And I can give you that address. Okay, okay, Nancy, and then you, and then I can take one more after those two. Okay, so Nancy, go ahead. Thank you. Um, <laughs> oh, not I, you, Nancy. I'm so sorry. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Kristen. I have to do both Nancy's. I have to do both Nancy's. Go ahead. We'll do. I'm sorry, Nancy. Yeah, I also get asked uh, what happens to the styrofoam that the defenders pick up, you know, in our previous styrofoam second sites, because it's changed over the years. And I'm afraid I may be doing the wrong answer anymore. Can you tell me what happens to that styrofoam now? Barb is going to tell you what happens to that styrofoam now. <laughs> Barb Day is our chair of our styrofoam. Woodstock, Barb became, moved the styrofoam to the hospital. What uh, happens? Can you hold that so that people? Oh, can I never thought. Okay. It's not a microphone. It's for the people online. All right. <laughs> we collect, and I'm going to also put in a plug. I need volunteers. We collect styrofoam at three sites: one in Woodstock, one in Crystal Lake at the Algonquin Township facility and one in Algonquin at their public works facility. We have people who go to each facility and who sort because a good hunk of the styrofoam is dirty. And then they bag it. And then we have other people who get uh, rent a U-Haul truck, 26 foot, and they drive around all three sites once a week and pick this stuff up. And then they take it to Ken Santowski's business, Chicago Logistics Service. And this is the thing I'm excited about. Ken bought a densifier, and he has one of our recycling volunteers and one of his own people who push the hard styrofoam through that recycler. I can show you all pictures. It comes out in about like a two by four in four foot lengths and Ken sells the styrofoam. So we, in essence, my point being, we now have a closed circular operation here. I am thrilled. Um, oh yeah, Shannon had a question and I promise, Nancy, I promise. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Okay, go ahead. You are, thank you. Go ahead, Shannon. So as someone who has to use plastic packaging in like my business. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I've always been sort of like a moral hierarchy of plastics, and there are plastics that are more likely to get recycled than plastics that are less likely to get recycled. And I was always told that PET plastic, the number one plastic, is more recyclable because there are more markets for it in the US. Is that still accurate information? That is my understanding as well. Mm -hmm. PET one, ones and twos are the more marketable ones. Yeah. Unless, I mean, I'm sorry, you had it. Okay, let me do, okay, I swear I have to stop because we have, we have, and I promise to, I'm going to hang out. So I'm happy to answer any more questions. But Nancy, go ahead. No, okay. Go ahead and I'll do you, and that's it. Okay. I think this is a really good question. Okay. What is better when we go and buy beverages, et cetera? Is it better to get plastic, cans, or bottles? Uh, yeah. My opinion yeah. is cans, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. Cans turn into cans. They, they don't, and they turn back into cans okay. a bazillion so times over. Possible, like beer, yep. Get the you cans gonna, whenever you can. And you got to think of the carbon footprint of shipping glass. It's very, very heavy. So there's that. And plastic, you know, plastic. Okay. We've been talking Thank about plastic. You. Cans turn into cans. Thank you for bringing that up. That's a really good point. Okay, last question. You were curious about um, recycled bin for home recycled curbside, and there's contamination. When is it deemed? Is it is it the hauler who comes and is going to dump it in your truck? Looks at it and says, "This has styrofoam, has unrecyclable things. It's contaminated. Put it in the garbage, or you know, in the with with the trash instead." Or is it just, it's in your recycle bin, it goes in the truck, and then the whole truck gets to the facility. They look at it and say- Okay, this table is shaking their head no. My understanding is, is a lot of times it is the hauler that okay. if they can see it, 
and they see that it's contaminated, that they either won't take it or that it goes right. But, but Dee Dee, what do you? Well, from the from Kelly's boss, which she gets told anyway. Um, at well, at the transfer station, the one in Lake the Hill, and then the one in Crystal Lake. Like, well, what happens is they, you know, they dump, like they take the recycling to, at the transfer station or smaller trucks and then big semi trucks to take it to the landfills. So they dump it. And then I don't know who's this person, who's the story. They look at it and if, if it, it appears to be too contaminated. They push the whole side to the other side. And it just mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's no true. Man. For not following the rule of right. your work. And yeah. 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 So get on the right. right. Yeah. 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 The transfer station is a very, very interesting place if you're yeah. into this stuff. I've been on a couple tours of that. It's very, very interesting. Guys, I really, really appreciate it. I know it's a really hot topic. There's so many, many questions and I really appreciate everybody hanging in there while I'm sweating to death up here because it's hot in here. So apologize for that. Um, but thank you all so very much. Can I just say, and it's not it's bad, it's not what I think. Oh yeah, that's a good point. So so you made a good point is if you put your recyclables all in a little plastic, oh my God, sorry. <laughs> If you put your recyclable in a plastic bag, which I know my neighbor does all the time, drives me nuts, they're throwing it out. If they see that, it's instantly garbage. Doesn't matter what's in there. They're not opening it up. It's garbage. It's garbage. Thank you. Sorry. And same for the people that shred, you know, they shred stuff and they put it in the plastic bags. My neighbor does that. Instead of in a paper bag, it still needs to be contained. But yeah, yeah. So thank you, Kim. Dr. Kim. And Aaron, too, and Peter, thank you 